everybody, British Bob here. How do you do? Today we're going to be looking at Monkey Kid's Cloud Bike, which comes with a total of 203 pieces and was released in March 2021. If you haven't already seen this cartoon, check it out, it's awesome. This is set number 80018 and is recommended for ages 6 and over. It's a Wave 3 release of the Monkey Kid theme and comes with three rather cool looking minifigures. Flipping 180 to the back of the box, we can see a fun action scene between the two bikes, together with some of the key play features, and a civilian with a very hip and fashionable backpack. So now it's time to boot up my 80s computer and find out what's inside the box. Activation code required. Access granted. So first up we have the instruction book, which is filled with loads of beautiful artwork. Bag number one. Bag number two, the sticker sheet, and finally the three completed minifigures. So let's jump straight into the minifigure arena and take a look at the first minifigure, who in this case is going to be Monkey Kid. And here he is in all his glory, sporting the sacred golden star. This minifigure is pretty similar to the one that we received in the first two box set waves, but there are a couple of differences. So let's start at the top and work our way down. So looking at the headpiece, this is the same jewel moulded hair and bandana, and the same goes for the face print, which has been included in about six other box sets to date. However, the first difference lies around his neck in the form of this hoodie. It replaces the headphones from the first two waves, and it also comes in that lovely bright bluish green colour. But personally, I think it's a case of change for the sake of change, and a new pair of headphones in a different colour would have gone down a treat. Looking at his torso now, they've slightly redesigned his jacket, Whereas he had the monkey face logo on the back, he now has this on the front, with large Chinese writing evident under his hood. Moving down to his legs, these are the same as in the previous box sets, but they are beautifully jaw moulded in both red and black, with some lovely addition of front and side printing. Moving along now, we have his alternate face print, with his sort of wry or confident smile. And lastly, we have the golden staff itself, which is composed of a red lightsaber blade and two gold extra long lightsaber handles. Next up we have one of the evil Spider Queen's minions, Spindrax. She looks a rather mean individual. Straight off the bat, I have to say, I really do love the design. I personally feel black and purple are a winning colour combination, and that luminous green detailing really pops against the dark background, with some really intricate printing on both the front and back of the torso, and also the front leg prints. Starting with the top, the face print is new for this model, and it has a lot of character with the four green luminous eyes, the fangs, and the dark detailing around the eye sockets and cheeks. The hairpiece has been kicking around since 2013, but really looks good on this model. And the same goes for the swords, I think this has been around since about 2017. Spindrax does however come with an exclusive shoulder armour piece, being available for the first time in medium lilac. Taking a closer look, Spindrax comes with an alternative face print, this time with more of a menacing smile. And you also have the option for her to wear this helmet when she's on the bike. This is yet another exclusive piece for this minifigure. My only gripe is the quality of the printing, as the edge detailing on the green spider's legs is a bit rough around the edges. And for all those who were curious, here's a closer look at that silver sword that she's wielding. Lastly we have the civilian, and I believe the correct way of saying her name is Hui. You can grade the quality of my accent below. And here she is. And that obviously wasn't a backpack, was it? It's some sort of mechanised arachnid. Anyway, I think this is a pretty awesome accessory piece. When I first looked at it, I thought there was no chance she was going to have of standing up. But those little claws at the bottom there support her perfectly. However, just make sure you build it exactly as you see here in front of you and as per the instructions. I tried it a few different ways and it didn't fit properly and you are going to run into trouble. Looking at the minifigure now, I believe that's actually uh, an exclusive face print, and Logo are using the hair piece that they introduced in 2020. The torso piece, both front and back, is really nicely done, but this particular piece has appeared once before in a previous set. Moving down to the legs, these are single moulded in azure blue to complete the look of the model. It's very simple, but I do actually quite like it, and as with all sort of like the Lego Movie and Ninjago Movie sets, I think it's great to have a few civilians to add to the mix. Very quickly, she comes with an alternative face print with a slight smile, and with a classic millennial smartphone which I believe has appeared in numerous sets before. Okay, next up we have the build, so I'll give you a break from my voice for a few seconds and leave you in the capital hands of Al with a big beard for a spot of stop motion speed building.
Fremantle tweeted fellow. All right, let's move on to Big Dave now and go and take a closer look at these bikes in the review room. If we start off by having a side-by-side -side comparison, we can see here that Monkey has a much bigger bike than Spindrax. And although I wasn't initially very keen on the design of Monkey Kid's bike, I have to confess it's really starting to grow on me. So let's take a closer look at it. Now I don't know a great deal about motorbikes, but it does appear to be a bit of a cross between a superbike and a chopper. So even though it has aerodynamic lines and a big petrol tank, it has more of an upright seating position and that large light at the front. As with some of the other Monkey Kid vehicles, it has the red and white chequered pattern on the front sticker here, and if you look closely enough, you can also see the letter M with the black outline there. But in the seating area, you've got the handlebar here that goes up and down, and you've also got plenty of room for Monkey Kid to sit in. Looking at the first of the stickers, we've got a bit of an air intake going on along the bottom there, and closer towards the handlebars, we've got this green peeling sticker. And for those of you with eager eyes, you'll notice it's the same Chinese symbol as is in the back of Monkey Kid's torso. Flipping to the right side of the bike, we have the same air intake sticker along the bottom. This time, the sticker closest to the handlebars shows that the bike runs on spider juice. At the back of the bike, LEGO have used a LEGO Technic piece to represent the exhaust. And you have the option to stick that cloud or smoke piece into the back of it, which was introduced predominantly for the Monkey Kid line last year in 2020. Right, now it's time to get on to the fun bit. This little yellow ball is your gateway to firing off the white discs on either side. And you might recognise it, it's the 1x4 shooter which was also on the Cloud Jet. An ultimate kudos, it glides like it's on rails. Now very cleverly they've used this LEGO Technic piece to represent the exhaust, but it also enables the bike to open out into the Cloud Bike version. If you think back to May's Dragon Horse bike, you'll probably recall that looks a little bit like a dragonfly, but this one looks like a water boatman. Either way, I think this works really well as a bike, but also, I mean, it could be used as some sort of hovercraft, or wherever your imagination can take you. If I just pop Monkey Kid in here, you can see he's got a bit more of an upright seating position. But there you go, I think that pretty much concludes this one, and let's fly him away and bring in the next bike. And here it is, and personally, I feel Spindrax's bike is the much better design of the two, and it looks remarkably like one of the Loremaster bikes from the Judge Dredd comic series. My only gripe is it's just too small, it's just not beefy enough mate. The colour scheme is very fitting with the Spider Queen's theme, coming in black, purple and luminous green, and it comes with quite an arsenal of four fully loaded stud shooters at the front. This one definitely has more of your traditional superbike lines, and as a bit of a bonus these wide rim wheels are available for the first time in medium lilac. There's not really much going on on the underneath of the bike, but if we take a look at the first of the three stickers, we can see it shares the same decals as the Spider Queen's outfit and cape. The sticker on the other side is the same but mirrored, and the last one running down the nose of the bike is nicely detailed, and it also appears to have three spider's eggs or some sort of gaseous orbs. The seating area is a bit more modest than on Monkey Kid's bike, and it comes with a brown seat and two studs for Spindrax's feet. Behind it we have the mudguard which moves up and down, so you can let Spindrax perform some wheelies, or you can actually use it as a bit of a handbrake to keep the bike parked, or not parked. As with Monkey Kid's bike, the handlebars go up and down, and if we just put Spindrax into the driving seat, we can have a go with the stud shooters. This one doesn't roll half as well as Monkey Kid's bike, but it still does okay. And that's the end of that. Overall verdict time next, so you can give me a penny for my thoughts. It's all right, net. But starting with the positives, you literally get two machines, three minifigures, and a mechanized arachnoid. I don't want to labor this too much, but with May's Dragon Horse bike, you did get that sort of roadblock with the flaming gate. Ooh, fantastic. Oh, no. And personally, I'm not a big fan of all the little buildings and bits that you get with some of the sets, because once you've built it, they pretty much just end up shoved in a box. Bye-bye. The construction of both bikes is pretty sturdy, so they tend not to fall apart in your hands. And going back to the way that Monkey Kid's bike glides, it really is fantastic. They've probably done it on purpose to make up for the fact you're probably going to lose all four of those white discs under the sofa within about one minute. But again... Ah, ah that's where one of the kid's socks went. Without realising it, you do actually receive quite a few exclusive pieces, be it brand new moulds or different colour variations. So let's move on to the next step and take a look at all the exclusive pieces and spare parts included with this box set. So ladies and gentlemen, what's the magic number going to be today? 
It's four. Let's welcome in the contestants. Up first, we have the Lego Technic Wedge Belt Wheel, making its first appearance in bright bluish green. Sticking with the same style, we now have it available for the first time in transparent bright orange. Moving on to the wide rim, yet another first colour appearance in medium lilac. And last but not least, the 1x4 Brick with Bow, also available for the first time in medium lilac. Let's say goodbye to these contestants and bring in the spare parts. And here we have a buffet of shrapnel at your disposal, with some well-received spare white discs for Monkey Kid Shooter. Before we go, let's take a look at some worthy mentions. These are not exclusive to the box set, but exclusive to the Monkey Kid theme. Starting first with this 1x1 round disc with the Spider Queen's logo. Next up we have the Tooth Shaft, available for the first time in bright yellowish green. And to end the show, a new 90 degree holder with hole. This will make a very versatile piece for your own MOC. So there you have it peeps, it's a wrap. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and turn on the notification icon for any future videos which come out. Leave your comments below, and I'll see you again in the next video. Toodle Pepperoni!